Hello, 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 and welcome back, Skeleton Crew, Monsketeers, folks, friends, all of you out there. Welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast, Radnorok, and more specifically, a Skeleton Crew Fight Club episode, which is kind of just becoming the default in uh, this day and age. And I'm going to follow that. I'm going to follow, I'm going to ride that wave. I, I've had a couple opportunities to record. And whenever I find myself with an opportunity to record, I want to do this. I want to do another podcast episode with a video element. And voila. And I want to do it frequently. I want to do it more than like once a week you know, and I've been trying to divvy up my recording time into like podcast, cartoon commentary, vlog and Terry, what have you. And then the podcast would be like, all right, I got to do a watch along. I got to do a retrospective. I got to do this. I got to do that. (laughs) And really, I don't know. I'm just having the most fun doing fight club episodes. So it's going to be more of this. It's going to be more of this for a little while. And if you're missing, you know, the cartoon commentary and stuff, well, there there are like 300 of those videos. There's more than 300 of those videos. And I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm needing a break from that format specifically. And maybe I can add kind of like a cartoon commentary element to this. You know what I mean? Make this like the video element at least make the video element of the the podcast more of like a uh, variety show. You know what I mean? Like maybe each episode of the podcast can have, I don't know, maybe not both, but maybe you could have a comment, a cartoon commentary and a vlog and Terry mixed in, or maybe I start doing the cartoon commentaries while doing the podcast and then um, chop it up to where I can have a version that's just the cartoon commentary without the podcast and then have the podcast. You know what I mean? So lots of possibilities, lots of, lots of ways to play. Um, but I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying the having the podcast audio and video and attacking the audio and video platforms simultaneously. And then there's certain things that, you know what I mean, that could be in the video component of the podcast that doesn't translate well to the audio and vice versa. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll just have to see, man. We'll just have to see. But I did tell my wife that I want to at least do half an hour of recording a night before bed and like utilize that as a way to unwind from the day. You know what I mean? Have a cup of tea. You know? I love tea. Send in your tea, Rex. Look at this mug, too, by the way. It's not Halloween right now on our prime timeline, but I love this mug. It's the size of the mug. It's the depth of the mug that I like. And I like Halloween, so. But it feels weird. It feels weird to use out-of-season you know accessories. That's what it was. It wasn't appliances. It wasn't utensils. It wasn't props. It's accessories. Uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. It's going to be this more frequently. And I'm trying to decipher what that means. But for now, I'm just riding the wave. I'm just riding the wave. And it seems like people are into it as well. You know, it's 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 getting the a similar reception as the cartoon commentaries do, if not a little bit better. 
uh, and vlogging Terry stuff too. And that'd be kind of neat. Would that be neat to have this lead into like vlog and Terry footage? Do I just shoot things and then when I talk about it on the podcast, then I layer it in? You know what I mean? Like, do I talk about look? We're going back to Disney. We've decided, and we're already we're planning our next trip. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So there's going to be some, you know, there's going to be some of that footage. I'm going to collect footage doing that. But I've done the ride-alongs, I've done the ride-throughs, and it's like, how many times can you do the same rides over and over and over again and, you know, release video of the same thing? Sure, the commentary is different, but more often than not, the ride is usually the same. So we're going to see. We're going to see where this goes because I kind of like that idea. I like the idea of having this, you know, kind of be the new staple to all the videos. And then what, whatever come, whatever may come from that will be. Did that make any sense? Did any of that make any sense? I'm going to be real with you. This isn't the first attempt at recording this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I've been, I've been unwell still. Uh, we've had, I think we had like another round of either the same mutated cold jump around us, our family, or we brought a new one in or the colds just turned into other various infections with within each of us maverick has an ear infection i definitely have a sinus infection i don't think bane's infected uh rhodes roadie has some sort of something going on with his nose too so i don't know man i don't know there's just been there's been a serious funk that we we've all been combating and this this funk this funk has inspired me to uh depart from inhalants as being my, my THC intake. And I am a, I'm a dedicated edibles guy for the time being. Uh, consistently though, consistently edibles, I think are the way to go. Like for, for doing things around the house, like, Cause that's what I'll do. I, I used to, I used to take a smoke break or what have you, um, before like cleaning the house or doing dishes or doing yard work or something. Just because, it just because it makes it less. I don't know. Makes it feel less like a chore and more like an adventure. Um. But anyway, yeah. So the sinus infection that I have. Uh, I want to say was brought on by two things. Uh, smoke, irritation. I mean, obviously, I think I bounced. I jumped back in prematurely. I wasn't, I wasn't completely past the cold enough before I started irritating my, my airways. Uh, and I've lost my train of thought. But anyway, oh, and lack of sleep, just just sheer ex exhaustion, which also, you know, weakens your immune system and, and knocks you down a peg. So those two things I feel like have landed me in how I'm, I'm not feeling terrible now. The lot, what day is it today? Tuesday? Monday. The last couple days though, last few days, uh, was pretty gnarly. So... Anyway, uh, on the mend, on the mend, everyone seems to be pretty on the mend. Maverick is on antibiotics. I'm not, I kind of, I don't know if it's reckless or not, but I usually, I usually just let my immune system do the work. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a, uh, let's, let's put my body to the test. Let's, let's get the workout. You know what I mean? I mean, be, build those, 
natural antibodies, you know? Don't I don't shoot mystery liquids <laughs> into my veins to and hope for the best. Uh I tough it out. I tough it out. And especially when those mystery liquids don't do anything and you still end up catching whatever it was supposed to prevent. And you still are contagious. And you're more susceptible. <coughs> but what do I know? Cough, cough, excuse me. <laughs> what I know is... Uh, I'm clean, I'm clear. I, I, hope, I hope for the best for those who, who made the opposite choice that I did. Um, <clears throat> less neither here nor there though. It's a, uh, it's a topsy turvy world though. It's a very topsy turvy world. And I just don't, I don't understand it. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why the focus is so heavily invested and geared towards just things that seem so nonsensical. And so much of it involves children. And if you don't hold the mindset of protecting kids at all costs, then you're a psycho. <laughs> like, there's something wrong with you. There's all these restrictions on kids for, you know alcohol, driving, body mod certain body modifications. Uh but then there are those who believe kids are capable of making life altering decisions and transformations at like seven. Hey, yo, Bane six, almost seven. Do you know what I would trust Bane in? Not much, not much. He is a very smart, very bright boy and changes his mind more frequently than he changes his underwear. So to presume that any child out there doesn't operate similarly because I don't think my kid's the unique case when it comes to having a fickle nature. Uh, yeah. Anyway, some of you people out there got me side eye in you. Um, but anyway, I don't want to get, I don't want to get too carried away with that. I have a, I have a tendency to get real ranty and when I get ranty, I have a, a tendency to become offensive. And well, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, I have to think of others. I have to think of others before I fly off at the mouth and say the logical and rational things that make sense to me. And the things that make sense to me, I naturally presume would also make logical and rational sense to anybody with a functioning, a healthy functioning mind. Ultimately, if you disagree with me, <laughs> you're a crazy person. <laughs> but I'm serious. I'm very serious about that. Yeah. If we don't see eye to eye, you're the problem. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> was that cryptic enough? Was that cryptic enough to not, to not have this video affected on, on YouTube? Am I going to throttle my algorithm? Anyhow, hey, hey, now they're here. We, we don't need it. We don't need to get overly wrapped up in that. You know what we do need to get overly wrapped up in the, in the, with though, is I think I'm going to start killing mice. And I say that with a heavy heart. I do. I do. But I feel as though 
I'm being attacked. I'm being antagonized. I'm being disrespected more than anything. Uh, what I thought was a mouse in our house has turned into being mice in our heist. Uh, <laughs> uh, more than one mouse in our singular house. And it's pissing me off because I've, I've been cool. I've been so cool. I've been so cool up until this point. So uh, I noticed fecal matter, rodent fecal matter, and thought to myself, well, that's yucky. I don't want that. I don't want that in my home. I have a two-year-old. I have a six-year-old. I have a two and a six-year-old who have a, who, who hold, both hold habits of finding things on the floor and putting them in their mouths. Now, the two-year-old I find more at risk because there's zero thought. There's zero thought into what that child sticks in his mouth. Like, no thought at all. He will look on the floor and be like, hey, that's something that stands out to me. What does it taste like? Bane, Bane is a little more, my six-year-old is a little more, at least, it makes more sense. You know? Like, there's popcorn on the floor. At least it's food. Now, it's also on the ground at the zoo, so there's a lot of it's a lot a lot more variables that come into play with the germ load on said popcorn. Now, now popcorn, there's popcorn on the floor and right now from Bane. Um at least the popcorn that we have on the floor in our home is slightly less questionable. And I say slightly uh, who knows what these fools walk through and track through the house, especially like Nova. I mean, she just walks in her own poop <laughs> outside. I gotta start scooping that more. More mostly because the where where she goes to the bathroom is like this fenced in area of our backyard, and it's like, man, that'd be really good. It'd be a really cool place to like a really good area to utilize for like kids to go play but they can't really go play freely with a bunch of dog duke on the ground so it's going to be my responsibility to ensure there are no landmines for them to step on but i digress uh what was i saying oh yeah i'm afraid that maverick might eat mouse poo so i don't I haven't. I haven't had it in me. I haven't had it in me to uh, utilize trapping methods that result in execution. Uh, the mouse... I, there was a time in my life where I didn't believe that whatever mouse was leaving the droppings behind was being antagonistic. I didn't think they were being disrespectful. I didn't think they were being malicious. It was a mouse doing mouse things. You know what I mean? It's been cold here in Tennessee. If I was a rodent of some kind, I would like to go live in a nice warm house where children leave food particles all over to where I can gorge myself. You know, I have a, a real, I'd have quite the feast every single night of my life. It's a really comfortable, preferable life for a mouse. Uh, so I got. I utilize a humane trapping method uh, where it doesn't kill the mouse. It just traps them, and then it's up to me to go release them back in the wild. And did that. I did that, and I did it once. Noticed there was more poop that sprung up after the trapping. Did it again. And now, after the second trap and release 
It's either the same mouse finding its way back to my house and back into my house. Wait, did I just say back into my house twice? Like back to back? I don't know. I'm tired still, guys. Uh, It's either the same mouse or there's a lot of them. But I just don't understand why it seems like only one like well only one will ever come out at a time because the droppings left behind doesn't feel or doesn't seem as though it's from a collection of individual animals it just seems like a singular individual animal so i don't know if it is the same mouse acting as the repeat offender is is it time? Is it a three strike rule? You know what I mean? I caught you twice. I released you twice. You're back in for a third time. Now you have to die because I have no faith that I can catch and release you. And we're not going to just end up going through this same cycle over again. So, you know, rest in peace or, or, this is malicious and disrespectful and it is a conglomerate or a cabal. That's actually the word I wanted to use. It's a cabal of mice and their whole soul mission, their whole purpose for existing is to torment me to, to always make me feel like I'm making zero progress. I will do a trap. I will do a release. And the very next day, it's like, it's like it never happens because there will be. And you know what? It's like when I find it on my kitchen counter, it's hard not to feel that there's an element of disrespect because that's where I feed my family. You know, it's very disheartening to be, packing Bane's lunch for the day or making Maverick breakfast and and seeing mouse turds on the counter. Like that's just that's unsanitary. Like that's pushing that's pushing it too far. And if it is more than one mouse, do I just do I do I do I take one life to prevent the need to take many, you know what I mean? Do I do like a, do I, do I catch and kill and put the little mouse head on like a toothpick and like on a little, like a little pike to send a message to the other mice? Like, look, if it's war you want, it's war you're going to get. I don't know. And is it, I don't have a qualm killing bugs you know um there's every summer we we have a uh what was once uh, i guess you could call a spider problem it didn't feel problematic but there there would be we would kill more spiders than i cared to like i, I would have to address more spiders than i cared to uh, ultimately, I found the source of where the spiders are coming into the house or making their way into like the general, you know, occupancy of the house. And uh, I've laid glue traps in both locations and it's worked wonders. You know, over the summer, the traps will collect, you know, whatever spiders are trying to find their way into the the uh, center of the home, and you know, no fuss, no muss. It's all it's all great. You know, they walk, they walk uh, until they reach a part a point where they can't walk anymore because they're stuck to the ground, and then they sit there and and die a slow. I don't know, maybe painful death, definitely a slow death. And I don't feel anything. I feel nothing. I don't care. I thought they were brown recluse spiders for a minute. But then I also think that the recluse and brown recluse means uh, alone. 
and I could just be making that up. So I don't feel like they travel in packs. It really seems like these spiders travel in packs. Maybe not travel in packs, but there's a lot of them uh, in, an, in a condensed area. So what I'm thinking they are, and what I'm telling myself they are, is there's something called a southern house spider that looks an awful lot like a brown recluse. And I think it's like one of those kind of disguise methods that animals use. Like, um, I think there's like a lizard that has a tail in the same shape of a venomous snake's head. Or there's those snakes, like a, a milk snake and a coral snake or something. The two are almost identical, except like the sequencing of the stripes. Like one is black on red or the other one is red on yellow. I don't know. Something to that nature where they look, they look like the same animal until you see them side by side and you're like, Oh, they're not the same. I mean, they're the same animal, but not the same species. I don't know. Anyhow, um, I got to get my wisdom teeth out. It's crossed my mind just to do it myself, but my wife says that's probably a bad idea. So I don't know. I think that's probably one of those things I should listen to her with. Uh, went to the dentist today with Bainey, though, and I was shocked to learn that he had no cavities. I shouldn't be shocked because I do ensure he brushes his teeth day and night and we floss. So... I shouldn't be surprised, but I don't know, man. It just feels like he just seems like the kind of kid that would have cavities. I don't know, but he doesn't. So good on him. Good on me. Good on me. Because if it wasn't for me, the kid wouldn't brush his teeth. Like I, I make that happen. Is that a narcissistic tendency to try to take credit for that? But I should take credit for that. Cause again, he wouldn't brush his teeth without me. Unless I was enforcing that rule, he wouldn't do it of his own accord. So yeah, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that win. I'm taking the trophy. I'm taking the no cavity trophy as my own. Although I personally may have some. I don't know. Time will tell. I got yeah. I got to go to the dentist. Uh, don't know where I was going to go with any of that. But, but here we are. I, I do think, so for example, we're 27 minutes in roughly, and I'm using the audio time code, which uh, it's pretty in sync with the video time code. And I feel like now, at least in the video format, would be a perfect time to throw in like a cartoon commentary. But is anybody watching these podcasts online that long? Like an hour is a standard, but I could cut it at 30 and then do another episode, you know? So we're just going to see. We're just going to see. Like I said, we got a new Disney trip lined up. So it's going to be cool to figure out what to do. With all of that footage. I like doing the ride-alongs and watch-alongs and blah, blah, blahs. So, I don't know. We'll see. But you can't have too much of the same thing. Otherwise, I presume people are going to get bored. And if this, this like the video element of the podcast is like a variety show, I think, how do you get bored with that? I don't think you do. I think it works out really well. So much so that I'm just going to say, why not? Why not throw a cartoon commentary in the mix right now? Do I snap? No, that's a ripoff. That Rick Glassman, the comedian Rick Glassman does that on his podcast. He snaps and it cuts to, I want to do fun cuts though. So this will be a fun cut, right? But do I lead into what cartoon it is from here? Because honestly, like maybe I don't know. I mean, I have one already recorded. 
And I could just slide it into the mix. Hmm. Hmm. And when it comes to like collecting vlog footage, I could just kind of splice in vloggy stuff into these podcast episodes too. I don't know, man. There's a lot, there's a lot that could be to be experimented with. But with that being said, I'm going to, I'm going to, but then, but then we have the, the podcast audio and the podcast audio. They're not, it's it's not going to want to have cartoon comment, but I could stop the recording and then just put in some sort of funny interlude music in the podcast and then just come back from, uh, from the cartoon. Yeah. You know what? Let's give that a go. <laughs> let's, let's give that a go. But then do I stop putting out the cartoons by themselves too? I don't know. This is hard. This is hard to really figure out, but it, I don't know. Is it though? Is it? No, it's not that hard. Let's cut to a cartoon and go. Hello again and welcome back skeleton crew to another Rat in a Rock classic cartoon commentary. And today we're headed back to 1956. December 5th, 1956, to learn us a little something from Jiminy Cricket about our senses of smell and taste, and I'm fascinated. You are a human animal. That's correct. You are a very special breed. Yeah, how about that? For you are the only animal. That can what? Who can think, who can read, yeah. who can read. Okay, I mean, that all checks out. Think and reason, though, that's kind of hard to be confident about I'm pretty sure we're the only animals that know how to read but to think and reason that's eh, a stretch but I like the confidence I like the ego boost glad you're looking in. hey glad to be looking in huh yeah okay and life would be pretty dull without them. that could be a lot of things air <laughs> oh okay uh huh. Your sense of smell works alone. Okay. Well, unless you're eating them. When it comes to food, your sense of smell and your sense of taste. Flowers can be food. I want. I want that to be known. Delicious. Now let's go back a few years. Okay. To what? Like 1950. We'll start with early man. That's more than a few years. Smell to uh-huh. him food. Okay. So like the smell of a mastodon? Oh. Well, that's just theft, and I think that would burn your mouth. Ooga dada. Now what was that? She really just let that happen. That's what I thought he was gonna smell. Ugadada is just every. Or, oh wait, is that okay? Okay, he is eating mammoth because he took a bite. Said Ugadada, and the mammoth came out from behind a rock, and he said Ugadada again. Just deduction and reason alone dictates that it must mean mammoth. Anyway, I stopped paying attention. What are we doing? Who's this dog? That's true. Why? Wow. Wow, that's pretty wild. It's only about the size of a and mine's more, smaller because I have a messed up septum. The ability to think and plan. Okay. So with modern methods, he doesn't have to use his sense of smell to locate food. No. But the dog's nose <laughs> still tells. <laughs> okay, well, dogs don't actually eat the bones. Well, I guess maybe they do. I mean, I guess, huh? Because I get my dog bones and 
she chips away at him, and I guess she swallows the little tiny pieces. That sounds dangerous. There you go. It's exactly what we're talking about. What's Seal Island? I want to know more about Seal Island. Yeah, that makes sense. Potato soup. Wow. This is roast turkey and fried chicken at the same meal? <laughs> this kid's living lavish. How big's his family? Is this all for him? That seems unreasonable. Oh no. They're just meaningless. Because without your sense of smell, yeah. your taste buds uh, stick out your tongue, boy. <laughs> stick out your tongue, boy. I'm going to start saying that whenever my son Maverick has something in his mouth. Oh, bitter's all the way in the back, huh? And then sour was up front, was at the top? I suppose that makes sense. I want to go test that out. Salt is definitely the sides. Excuse me? Oh, that's weird. Oh. Could you imagine, like, rubbing up against something and tasting it? So is it just the whiskers on a catfish, or do they taste through their scales as well? Call the fish fish bait. Formicidae? Wow. Okay. But what does he taste with? <laughs> It'd be a lot harder to step on an ant when, you know, if they look like that, if they were adorable. That's the thing about bugs. They're easy to squish because they're not cute. I guess that's subjective. I don't think they're cute, so I have no qualm in smushing. I smush ugly things. <laughs> oh man, what happened? I kind of wish every everything looked like its cartoon equivalent. Do any of these other bugs find it weird that you're a bug too, Jiminy? And you can wear clothes and talk? That would be the worst. That would be the absolute worst. Tasting with your feet? Yes. Mm-hmm. So think about this. <sighs> Anytime you smell a fart, <laughs> you're also in, also tasting it too. <laughs> Whoa! Hmm. Now some people won't believe this. So maybe that's why you don't enjoy <laughs> the smell of a fart, because you hear. Well, no, I just said you are tasting it. I don't know what I'm. I don't know what I'm getting at. It's just potty humor. Well, you're the one peeking for her. Okay. Oh, this is gonna make her brain explode. That sounds really fun. I want to try that out. Okay. Yes. Yes. Wow. I'm taking away a lot here, guys. I hope you are too. I am grateful I can't taste with my feet. And now I know when I smell a fart, I am inevitably tasting it as well. And back. That was cool, right? No? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to fill that gap in with on the, uh, on the podcast side. We'll see. Maybe like a little chime or something to <laughs> signify a transition. I don't know. I just kind of feel like, at least for the video element, just sitting here staring at me for an hour might not be as fun as 
you know, I, I hope it would be, but maybe it is, maybe it's as fun. I don't know. You know, we're going to try a bunch of different things. We're going to try a bunch of different things and, uh, you know, meld, meld, meld a lot of it all together and really hope for the best, I guess, because who knows? Who knows? I think I'm just, I was doing everything the other way for so long that it, it, it stopped, it started feeling rigorous and started feeling almost homeworkish. And I don't, I don't like when things start to feel that way, you know? Um, but then it beckons the question, like, do I release the cartoon commentaries on their own as well? And I guess I really should. Cause then it's kind of like a double whammy in a way. It's like filler here, but then that might mean you're watching the same cartoon twice. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, but we'll figure it out. We will definitely figure it out. Uh, I just really think there's, there's a lot of opportunity and I don't know if there's necessarily when I think of other people like other content creators who do this, uh, it doesn't seem like they have a whole bunch of different things going on all at once. And does that, does that, is that like a hindrance or am I, am I innovative in that way where I'm having such a variety of different, different you know, content elements coming into play or a variety of different, different things being created. I don't know. I don't know. These are the things, these are the thoughts that keep me up at night. For a while, I was, I was really kind of thinking, okay, Monday was going to be a podcast. Wednesday would be a cartoon commentary. Friday would be a vlog and Terry. But if I'm able just to do this, oh my God, more frequently, then I'll have this style of video going up on the, you know, on the, on the video platforms more frequently. And then I don't know. I keep saying, I don't know. I just, it's not very entertaining trying like hearing me think aloud, have just kind of like a, uh, a, not very confident stream of consciousness, <laughs> right? Uh, I got an idea of where of what to do, and I'm pretty pretty pumped on it. Uh, that cartoon, though, I know which one it was, and I'm not going to talk about it right now because I'm wondering if I should go into it. Like, all right, we've hit the time, we've hit the episode, we've hit the point in the podcast where it's cartoon time or do we start, do we start each podcast with the cartoon? Like, like they used to do with movies, you know, do I put trailers in? not trailers, but I don't know. Weird. Kitschy. Uh, like, like when you would go to a theater and they have like the, uh, the the promotion for the concession stand. I have a lot of vintage stock footage of that, but that'll get old to see, right? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Maybe I don't need to fill an hour if I'm going to be doing this more frequently, you know? Um, Huh. Yeah. So all that being said, <laughs> I feel like I'm winding down, which is okay. It's okay. I don't, I got, I can't, again, if I'm doing this more frequently, I can't hold myself to the fire 
to make sure every single episode coming out is an hour long. You know, it should just be my end of the day stream of consciousness, cap it off with some vlogentary or cartoon commentary, something or other. And, you know, really just go until my tea's gone, right? <sighs> yeah, I like that idea. I like that idea. But there's also no guarantee that I can do it every single day. You know? And But here's the thing, too. Okay, maybe, maybe. No, scrap that. Because the cartoon commentary that was involved in this episode, I will also post by itself as well. So if you don't want to sit through the podcast to get to the cartoon, there will be an option for you to only experience the cartoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I might have to edit those a little bit differently now. Huh. Maybe not. We'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. You know what I mean? But with that being said, um, go to Skeleton Crew brand.com you don't really have to go there you can go to leolegacy.com and that's l-e-a-l legacy.com and scope out everything we got going there uh the latest video podcast if you're looking at the website from a uh laptop or desktop web browser uh the video for the latest podcast will automatically play just right at the top of the page uh, it doesn't do that on mobile, but the mobile option for our website is very user friendly. So, and everything is very segmented and organized on the website for to help you find whatever you're looking for seamlessly, easily. Uh, podcasts have been categorized out, kind of, mostly. I mean, yeah, like you, you, when you click on, when you go to the podcast or when you go to the website and you go to podcasts, uh, say you just go, yeah, you just go to podcasts. Well, it's going to have a playlist of all the podcasts, uh, available and, or if you want to only see the watch alongs, then it's going to take you to all the watch alongs. If you only want to hear the skeleton crew fight club episodes, it'll take you to a playlist that only has skeleton crew fight club episodes. So it's just fun things like that, that I'm pretty proud of. I'm not a web designer. So to, for me to be able to like figure out all these things on my own has been really gratifying. Um, Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, and I'm really enjoying playing with the idea of just kind of like smooshing everything all together. But at the same time, I like having independent aspects of it all too, so we shall see. We shall see. But you know how people do like clips they do clips of their podcast. Well, the vlog and Terry and the cartoon commentary portions of podcasts when released independently could, could double as, as just like clips. You know what I mean? And it also, if you're only listening to this on the audio, uh, platform, it, it may provide you a little inspiration to go and scope out what's going on in the video realm. I don't know. There's gonna be a lot of brainstorming and a lot of experimentation coming, coming up, but the really, the, 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 the consistency is going to be this format. Maybe a lot more my face because the more I do this, the more I realize that the world needs more of my face. I might not like want to look at it. <laughs> I get mad at my wife when she starts playing 
video, the commentaries and stuff that I've done uh, on our TV, like with me in the room or something. I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you needing to watch that right now? Like, I enjoy doing this. I just don't enjoy the playback. Which I wonder what that says about my psyche. Who knows? Um, I'm also thinking, too, that I I should... I should use like cool vernacular like brought to you by Skeleton Crew. You know, does that make people want to buy it more? It's like another episode of Rad and Rock brought to you by Skeleton Crew brand. LeoLegacy.com slash shop. Go shop your Skeleton Crew brand options. Uh, I'd have, I just ordered for myself and I ordered one for a friend. Um, our new Skeleton Crew rash guards. So if you are a practitioner of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or you're a surfer or a boogie boarder or, a, you know, you just like wearing rash guards at the beach, at the pool or whatever, go pick up one of our Skeleton Crew rash guards. I personally made them for to use doing Jiu-Jitsu. And the a friend that I ordered one for is a buddy of mine, uh, cyber buddy of mine over on the West Coast. He does jujitsu as well. He, uh, I'll keep him anonymous until he tells me he likes the rash guard. If he says he likes the rash guard, then I'll name drop. But uh, you know, it's not, it's not like a name that I don't think a lot of people would recognize necessarily. Very funny comedian, but it's not, you know, like carrot top that'd be cool if it was carrot top though (laughs) oh um it's john stamos (laughs) if john stamos if i'd said that john stamos was a purple belt in brazilian jiu-jitsu that would be kind of like an easy rumor to believe right i have no idea at all but saying that it doesn't seem far fetched, right? If I was like, "Hey, John Stamos actually has his purple belt," it's like he's really proficient with rear naked chokes. I I, I feel like you'd be like, "Oh, okay, yeah, I can see that." He plays drums with the Beach Boys. Why wouldn't he do jujitsu? He does a lot of just unexpected cool things. So it's John Stamos. <laughs> I just made a rash guard, and I'm sending him one out to Uncle Jesse. <laughs> okay anyhow yeah go leolegacy.com l-e-a-l l-e l-e-a-l can't really see the a because of my wedding ring uh legacy.com and everything you need will be there it's also at Leo Legacy across all your favorite social media platforms pretty active on the twitter trying to be more active on the instagram i don't even mess with facebook but the instagram theoretically updates the facebook so if you're on facebook if that's what you use if you follow us you're just getting regurgitated instagram posts so i hope that doesn't deter anybody from following on facebook but i'm just being honest um And then the podcast, subscribe, rate, review, leave a comment uh, across whatever podcast provider is your preference. And above all else, if you don't mind telling a friend that would really make you a friend and it would earn my undying appreciation so until we do this again i have been justin justin leal and i will see you on the next one see you